Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Zach Pascarello and in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I made $21,000 this month in my bookkeeping business. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm pretty tired today. I didn't even really feel like making a video, but I am committed to making a new video every single day trying to teach you how to start and grow your own bookkeeping business because I started my business three years ago and it is the best decision of my life. I'm so happy I did it and I just want to share my experience with you so that you can learn how to do the exact same thing that I did. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I post videos every single day. And if you need help starting your bookkeeping business, you can actually use the link in the description, schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I would be happy to work with you. Okay, so just like the title says, just like I mentioned, my bookkeeping business is absolutely exploding right now. And I wanted to share with you guys how I made $21,000 this month. So I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown of the clients that I have and then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on delivering A plus customer service because I always tell people starting a bookkeeping business is a four step process. You need to learn QuickBooks and bookkeeping. You need to learn marketing and sales. You need to deliver A plus customer service. And then fourth, you need to work really, really hard. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to explain kind of how my bookkeeping business has really taken off this year in 2023. So before this month, before March, I had 29 monthly clients and I actually just added, I just added seven clients. And from those 29 monthly clients, I was billing about $8,400. So my 29 clients were, I was billing them $8,400 per month, every single month. And the really cool thing is that these 29 clients, I've acquired them over the past three years. And that's why delivering A plus customer service is so important. So I got 13 clients in 2021 and I'm still working with, I still have those 13 clients that I got from 2021. Now keep in mind, I, I got more than just 13, but I've also lost some clients. So out of the, the clients that I have right now, 13 of them came from 2021. And then in 2022, I got 15 clients and the, the same concept. Like I, I got more than 15 clients in 2022, but I lost some and I gained some extra. So the from the clients I have right now, 13 of them came in 2021, 15 of them came in 2022, and then eight started in 2023. And I haven't lost any of the eight clients yet. So 20. And the reason I'm sharing this information is because it's so important to deliver A plus customer service. And that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. Step number three to starting and growing a bookkeeping business because you can, you can only imagine like if I get 13 clients in 2021, 15 in 2022, and if I do the same thing in 2023, and then just every year I continue to build on my monthly clients, then my business is just going to naturally grow. I'm going to be at 10,000, 15,000, $20,000 of monthly recurring revenue just from getting these clients and delivering a plus customer service. Now, the one thing I will say, just like I say in step number four, starting a bookkeeping business requires a lot of hard work. So I was not, I did not have this many clients in the first year of my business. I was not making $20,000 a month in my first year of business. So you need to keep in mind, if you're just getting started, don't get discouraged. Try to get two new clients every single month. That way you'll have 24 clients at the end of your first year. So I already mentioned that from my monthly clients, I was making $8,400 just for my monthly clients. And then I got some cleanups and cleanups really took off this year. I got a lot of clients asking me to do cleanups. I actually got seven cleanups and they paid me $7,420. So those are people, 2022 cleanups, I got seven of them. Those are people who were asking me to do like their entire year of bookkeeping from last year. And I was able to get more this year than I've ever gotten before, probably just because my business is three years old. I've built a reputation. People know who I am. And then finally, I had some people ask me to, to just catch them up in January through March of 2023. And then from that, I made $5,625. So I made a little over 7,000 from doing 2022 cleanups. I made a little over 5,000 from doing just quarter one cleanups in 2023. And the best part 
is that almost all of these clients are turning into monthly clients. So I, I get a massive amount of money up front to do a bulk of their bookkeeping from last year or the first quarter of this year. And then they continue to pay me every single month for bookkeeping services moving forward. So now I have 36 clients and they're paying me an average of $300 a month. So now I'm making on average, just from recurring monthly clients, $10,800 a month. And I can probably expect to make that every single month moving forward just for my monthly clients. And then who knows, maybe I'll get a quarter cleanup or a whole year cleanup here and there and boost my revenue. But just because of the, the season we're in with taxes being due soon, I had a lot of 2022 cleanups and a lot of 2023 catch-ups. And that's how I was able to make over $21,000 this month. And it all happened by gaining clients over the past three years by delivering A-plus customer service. So now I'm going to transition to talk about specific tips and tricks for delivering high-quality A-plus customer service to your bookkeeping clients. So I always tell people I really think that Learning bookkeeping in QuickBooks is the first step, but it's definitely the easiest. It's really not difficult to learn. Anyone can learn bookkeeping in QuickBooks. Marketing and sales is the hardest part. Like getting your first five clients is without a doubt going to be the hardest part about starting this business. But delivering A plus customer service is the most important part because you will have no business if you cannot keep your current clients. It's much easier to keep your clients than it is to get new clients. So like I said, delivering A plus customer service is by far the most difficult part of the entire business. And here are four, four tips or four steps to enable you to deliver high, high quality customer service. So you might be tempted to use artificial intelligence, or you might be tempted to outsource your bookkeeping services to low cost labor in different countries. But I don't think that's a good idea. I recommend you avoid automation. And a couple reasons because, first of all, QuickBooks specifically has rules that you can set up in your bank feed. So basically, like anytime a transaction comes in with, with this particular name in the bank detail, QuickBooks will automatically categorize that transaction however you tell it to. I recommend you don't do that. At first, it might make your job a little bit easier. It might save you a little bit of time. But I have so many clients come to me and they used QuickBooks rules and now they have so many mistakes and so many errors because QuickBooks is automatically categorizing those transactions and you have no idea if mistakes are being made. So this is a fast track to making mistakes and causing an absolute mess. So I just, I recommend avoid automation. Don't use QuickBooks rules. Just do the categorization yourself. It really doesn't take that much time. And this way, you know, it's being done accurately. Be careful who you hire and where you outsource the labor of your bookkeeping business. Like I said at the beginning, you might think it's a good idea to hire somebody from a different country who's offering to do labor at $4 an hour, but be careful because if you're paying somebody $4 an hour to do labor, you're probably going to get not the most high quality work. So be careful how you outsource the actual work of your bookkeeping business. Me personally, I would recommend that at least in the beginning, you do all the work yourself and whatever you get to the point of hiring somebody, just remember that it is now your responsibility to manage that person and to check the work of that person because ultimately you are the business owner. So everything that the business fails or succeeds at doing is your responsibility. So if, if the person you hire or the person you outsource the work to does a bad job or makes mistakes, that is going to be your, your responsibility. So be careful who you hire. And if you do hire somebody, just make sure you manage them properly. Make sure you oversee what they're doing and check their work. Communication is so important. And honestly, accountants and bookkeepers and CPAs, we get a pretty bad reputation when it comes to communication. I guess we have a stereotype of being traditionally numbers people and not great people people. But we can break that stereotype by communicating effectively with our clients. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from my, my new clients is that their old CPA firm or their old bookkeeper just was terrible at communicating, never answered phone calls, never responded to emails. So one of the things that I do is I offer meetings. So whether it's monthly or weekly or bi-weekly, offer meetings to your current clients. It's only gonna take 30 minutes. It's actually gonna make your job a lot easier because you can ask all of your questions, you can get all of your answers in that meeting. And it's just a great way to let your client know that you have time for them 
that you're willing to put in that extra work, get that face-to-face meeting or have that phone call, just offer meetings to your clients. And if they don't want to do the meetings, fine. But if they do want to do the meetings, that's a great opportunity for you to build a really high quality relationship with your clients. It seems so simple. And if you don't have any clients right now, or if you have two clients right now, you're probably thinking, of course, answer the phone. What are you talking about? I only have two clients. But I promise you, as your business grows and as you get 10, 20, 30 clients, you're going to want to ignore those phone calls because they're gonna come at 10 a.m. whenever you're deep in bookkeeping, deep in work, maybe you're doing some marketing content and you're going to be busy, you're not going to want to answer the phone, but trust me, I promise you, please just answer the phone anytime your clients call you, if you're available. Obviously, if you're in a meeting with somebody else, you can't answer the phone, but if you can answer the phone, resist the urge to decline the call, no matter how badly you want to, Maybe this client is a huge pain in the butt. Maybe you really don't like talking to them. You know they're going to give you a handful of problems that you need to fix or a handful of questions, whatever it might be. Just answer the phone. It will make your clients so happy. Okay, so they might not want to do meetings with you. They might not even call you, but they're going to send you emails. And it's really important to respond to emails within 24 hours. We are bookkeepers. We're supposed to be really organized. We're supposed to be on top of our computer and our, our office administrative work. Like that's what we do. So answering emails is a part of our business. It's a part of the service that we offer. So if somebody sends you an email, I try to respond to emails within 24 hours. So if it's Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and I get an email, I'm going to try to respond same day, but at the very least, you know, Wednesday morning, first thing in the morning, respond to that email that way from Tuesday at 9 a.m. 24 hours later, they're getting a response. Don't let emails pile up. If you have 10 unread emails from 10 different clients, you're going to be really stressed out. So try to answer these emails in somewhat real time because also if a client's asking you a question, they're probably working on something at that moment. So it's, it's really nice for your clients to get answers somewhat in real time. That way they can move forward with, with whatever they're working on. If you can do these things, I promise you, you're going to set yourself apart from every other accountant, every other CPA firm, just by offering meetings and just having standard communication with your clients, like they're really going to appreciate it. I promise you. I actually get this question a lot from clients, prospective clients during my sales calls. They ask me, how often am I going to do the work? How often am I going to be in their QuickBooks? What does my, my weekly routine look like? Or is it monthly or quarterly? And this is one of the big complaints about business owners and their relationship with their CPA because they their CPA might do their bookkeeping once a year just for taxes. And so they have no idea what their profitability is on a monthly basis. So how often do I do the work? How often do I do the bookkeeping? I tell everybody that I do it weekly and I actually do it weekly. So I give everybody a day of the week. So if you're a new business owner, if you're a new client of mine, maybe you'll get Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I'm going to log into your QuickBooks. I'm going to refresh your bank feed and I'm going to categorize all of your transactions. And if I have any questions, I'll send them to you. So you know to expect questions every Wednesday. And this way it's fresh in your mind. If you, if I do your bookkeeping once a month or even once a quarter, and if I have questions, like imagine if I asked you like, Hey, a month ago you went to an ATM, pulled out $200. Like, do you know what that was for? You're going to have no idea what that was for, but Hey, last week you went to the ATM, pulled out $200. Do you remember what that was for? much more likely that they will remember what they did last week versus last month or versus three months ago. So do their bookkeeping once a week and then send them their financial statements once a month. I try to do it in the first five days of every month. So April's coming up here. So by April 5th, I'm going to try to have all of the P&Ls delivered to all of my clients for January, February, and March. I'm going to have March complete, hopefully by April 5th, and I'm going to deliver their profit and loss. This will make your clients very happy because chances are their old bookkeeper or their old CPA was months and months behind. Okay, step number four, the last tip that I'm gonna give you for delivering A plus customer service is honesty and transparency. If you don't know something, you need to ask your client. If there's a transaction in their QuickBooks that you have no idea what it was, don't guess, don't try to categorize it, just ask them. I guarantee you they will appreciate your honesty and transparency of trying to do things the right way and trying to get the most correct answer when it comes to their bookie. If somebody asks you a question and you don't know, tell them you don't know the answer. Don't make something up. Be honest and let them know, hey, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm going to do some research and I'm going to get back to you. This way, your client knows they can trust you. 
And if, if, they, if you give them an answer, they know that it's going to be the correct answer. Because if you give them an answer that you don't know if it's right or not, and then they, they take you at your word, and then they ask somebody else, and somebody else tells them it's not right, all of a sudden the trust is broken. If you lie to your client or if you give them false information, they're not going to trust you, and you're never going to gain that trust back. So don't, don't be embarrassed to say that you don't know an answer to a question. Just let them know like, hey, I don't, I don't really know. I'm not going to give you an answer yet. I'll get back to you and I will answer your questions.